All right, me. All right, me. This is uh, the first one we're recording at camp, so I have no idea if this is the way that I'm gonna do the rest of these, or if I'm gonna have to figure out a different way, because I'm just recording this in the dining hall right now. Um, but this is the death and life of the Great American School System by Diane Ravitch. Um, this was, book was read for the uh, History of American Education class, um, the H340 class. Um, this was the third book that we had to read for it. However, the first book you haven't finished yet. So that's why it's the second in, in this section. Um, this book, I don't particularly like. Like it has like really great insights by Diane Ravitch, um, who was part of the Department of, of Education um, for a number of years, for like the entire Bush administration, I believe. Um, and, you know, was, was at first a really big proponent of, I should, I should explain what this book is about first. Um, so this book is about how we have made education and schools more into like a business. Um, and that has disenfranchised and has, in fact, lowered our academic standards instead of raising them like we thought it would. Um, really, like, the, the entire goal of everything that they go through, of, of No Child Left Behind and then the race at the top, is trying to find, like, a singular solution to a multifaceted problem, right? Um, one of the, right, there's, there's a whole bunch of ideas here of where like, oh, if we just get like a top quintile teacher every single year for a student in need, then the learning difference between them and a gifted child is going to disappear and it's going to be fine if we do that for like three to five years in a row. However, that's the way that was determined is by going, there's, here's a top quintile to teacher. This student gained 10 whatever points, or they averaged 10 points per student in gain, which puts them in the top quintile. And then if you just give that, that, that child a top quintile teacher five years in a row, because they gained 10 points that one year, well then therefore they should gain 10 points every other year, right? But that's not how education works. You can't make education into an economist point of view because it's not a linear thing. You can never guarantee what a student is actually going to absolutely know and learn and then what they're gonna forget and have to relearn, right? You can't predict that. You just can't. Um, there are, like, there are certain things that you just can't predict and you can't put into, like, a number system. And this is one, like, education is one of them. You just can't. Um, but that's not, that's not the easy way of thinking, right? Um, and it's, it's difficult to admit that, right? That no matter how much hard work a teacher or myself might put in, they just won't ever learn it, or a student may not just never learn it. Um, and that's difficult, right? Um, and th that's really what kind of Diane Ravitch goes into, is this idea. She was initially on, very much on board with the No Child Left Behind, the national curriculum, and with the, um, the, the idea of, of making schools more business-like, of where people have choice, people can go to schools that are better, things like that. Um, but at the end of the NCLB era, 
when she has left it, she realized, she has realized, oh, this was not as good as I thought it was. Um, and that's why she wrote this book. Um, yeah. So, the reason why I don't particularly like this book in general is not because of the themes. I really like the themes and the way that, the way, things that Diane Ravage goes into. I really, really do like that. However, this is like the, this is the revised edition. So this was like 2014, I think, when she published, when this version was re released. Um, and it's just dense. There are certain parts of this, right? Of I had a, a talk with Glenn, who is the instructor or the professor for this course, and he was like, "Yeah, I much prefer the other version to this, or the first version to this, because although it doesn't have like all the correct ideas or all the ideas that we now understand." It's much, it's just much better, much easier to read versus this in which there's a whole bunch of tangential information. Um, there's stuff that like she goes on for like 50 pages at points and it's like, well, you don't need to go on 50 pages. All you're doing is repeating yourself. Um, but it's Diane Ravitch and you can't really, you would have to have a very strong willed editor to reel in Diane Ravitch. Um, that's that. Um, really like at this point right in in what this book talks about in my own personal life right it's the idea that testing testing really really heavily depends on family affluence right it heavily depends on the socioeconomic ability of the family and that heavily influences, that is the most heavy influence on test scores. It just is. Um, now there are students who come from very low, low socioeconomic, socioeconomic background that do very well on tests. And there are students who come very, very, from a very high socioeconomic background that do very poor in tests. But still, the ma most major influence the largest influence in testing scores is socioeconomic standing. And that's just something that, that people have to eventually understand, right? Is that testing our way out of stuff and using testing as like our major points of whether or not a student passes or fails is not going to work. It's never going to work. There was approximately, I believe, about three billion dollars in like funding and to to push all of these a uh, whole like the majority of of the of the United States into this test first thinking of and and this choice thinking of like charter schools and private schools and using public money to fund those schools um but i think it was about three billion dollars the number i remember is that there's two billion dollars from like the big three um contributors and then i think there's about another billion dollars from other contributors and other things that kind of like lead to that um, and that's not even including the United States funding, right? So, and, or like any government's fund, funding whatsoever. So $3 billion, right? Put into completely revamping the American education system and it failed. And there was no accountability whatsoever, but it failed. And it is failing. If we instead taken in those $3 billion and invested in communities, and you know making things better and like revitalizing large swaths of our country that would have done so much more than revamping our schools 
but that's not the narrative people want to push, right? People don't want to push that we have to fix poverty. Because if we if the if the the end goal is the if the actual answer is that we have to fix poverty, then that completely ruins capitalism as a whole of where there are winners and there are losers. If we say that in order to have a very smart society, everyone has to eventually be a winner at some point, that completely destroys the entire idea. You know, it is what it is. <sighs> That's my thoughts. That's all I got. Um, number wise, I wanted. What did I give? The gold scene book. That one was like a six. So this is like a four. It's a fascinating book, and I have to write an essay on it. That's why there's that behind that computer behind me still. But I would never choose to do this to read this again. I would never choose to read this. This is a one time through book, and I'm gonna go bye bye. You're gonna sit on a shelf forever. Unless Glenn needs to talk and wants to talk about this for a reason. I have to pull this out again, but that's a, that's a different story. That's all I got.